Okay, welcome back. We are up to part two in the notes, and we're going to start off here with example number four. We're going to continue where we left off. Now, square root 75, x raised to the fifth. Now we're dealing with a variable. No problem. First thing we'll do, let's break down the 75 into prime numbers. 5 times 15, and then 15 is 3 times 5. When I rewrite this now, I'm going to write the numbers. The primes are 5, 5, and 3. 5 times 5 times 3. I always write my pairs first. x to the fifth, when you raise a number to the fifth, you multiply it by itself 5 times. So what that means is x to the fifth, when I expand this, x times x times x times x times x. That's x to the fifth. Okay, so all that exponent tells you is the number of times that variable is being multiplied. So what we're going to do now is we're looking for pairs. 5 times 5 is a perfect square. That's 25. Well, I can take the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So we pull a 5 out. Now, when you look at the variables, if you have a pair of x's, which we do, x times x is x squared the square root of x squared is x. This is a perfect square, x squared, so if I undo that by taking the square root, I'm left with x. We have another pair of x's, so we'll pull that out again. And now at the end, when I want to rewrite this, so I have 5, x times x is the same thing as x to the second. I'll write it with an exponent. So what we get is 5x raised to the second, and then times the square root. Now we still have a 3 left over, and we have an x left over. So we get 5x squared times the square root of 3x. Now you're probably thinking, how in the world do I check this? Well, there's a way to do it with the calculator. I'm going to show you this. And this is a really nice technique if you need to, say, take a test and you want to check your work. What I'm first going to do, now I didn't solve anything for x, I don't have a value for x, but I can pick something and what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it for the variable. This STO button right here, STO, right above the on button, that means store. So you can pick a random number and I'm going to pick something, I'm going to say uh, 6.3. 6.3. I'm going to store it, so I hit the store button. The X key is right here. This is my variable key right next to the alpha button. So I'm going to store it for X. It pops up an arrow there. And then when I hit enter, it just says 6.3. And what that means is that anytime I type X now, the calculator will substitute 6.3. What I want to know is, is my starting expression, which I'm going to type now, square root 75 x raised to the fifth power. When I store a number, I always pick a positive value to store, and I always pick a decimal. Okay, Don't use the number 1, don't use 0, or anything like that. And there's a reason for that that I'm not going to get into, but pick something that has a decimal. When I hit enter, I'm going to get some value. Okay, 862.74. I don't care what that value is. What I care about is that if I type my answer, which was 5x squared, that was outside, and then square root 3x. If I get the same value, then that means that this answer is correct. This is simplified. And I hit enter, and we get the same thing. So what that means is that these two expressions are equal to each other. This is simplified. So if you see a variable, don't get all confused about it. We're going to treat it just like we do with a number. If you see a pair, that's a perfect square, so we can pull it out. And when you pull out the pair, you write the number one time. All right, so let's take number five here. So square root 56, x to the sixth, y to the third. Let's break down 56. I'll say 7 times 8. 7 is prime. 
2 times 4, and then 2 times 2. All right, so we have a square root. And you may say to yourself, this is kind of a pain to write all this down. There are some shortcuts to this. Uh, what I'm showing you is kind of a, is a general way. I'm going step by step, and this will always work. But there are other methods you can try. Uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Okay, x to the 6th means we're going to have 6 x's multiplying. Underneath, I'll put the y's. We have 3 y's. One of the patterns that you may notice is that if there are 6 x's, there are 3 pairs. Because each pair is 2 of them. So we have a pair of 2's. That's really a 4. That's a perfect square, so I pull that out, I write the number 2. x times x times x, I'm sorry, x times x is a pair. I'm going to pull out an x three times. Now what you can do is if you recognize, well wait a minute, x times x times x, that's really x raised to the third power, 1, 1, and 1. So what I get here on the outside, um, we also have a pair of y's, and let me not forget about that. So y times y is a perfect square. The square root of that is just y. So our answer is we have 2 x raised to the, there's 3 of them, and then a y, 2x cubed y, square root. Now whatever's left over stays underneath. 2 times 7, I'm going to multiply that, that's 14. We took out all the x's because it was an even number. So we're not, the x's are gone, but we still have a y underneath. So square root 14y, and that is your answer. Is it possible to check that with the calculator? Actually, yes. Because you have two variables, so I can store 6.3, I'm gonna hit that store button again, for x. And then I can pick a different number, uh, let's say 2.4, and I'll store that. And to get the letter Y, that's the number 1 in green right above it. If I hit alpha and Y, then you guys see it right there. Okay, so I can store for Y. So what I'm doing when I'm checking, I'm going to type the original problem, which was square root 56 x raised to the sixth, and then y raised to the third. I know you can't see everything I'm typing here. Now I'm going to get some decimal, 6,957.16. Okay, fine. Is our answer the same? 2x to the third, y, and then times the square root of 14, y. If we get the same thing, we're good, and we are. Okay, so this is the correct answer. That's how you know that you're done. Let's do one more here, number six, and this is an interesting problem. They give us the simplified situation. This is five square root three. That's already simplified because you can't break down the three, and there's not another three underneath. The question is, what was the original number before we simplified it? So what we're going to do is work backwards. You know that when you have a pair of numbers or a pair of variables, we can pull that out because we can take the square root of that and we write the number outside one time. Well, in this case, let's take the outside number and put it back in. If we had pulled out a 5 to get to here, that means we must have had two of them originally. So what I'm going to do, when I put it underneath the square root, underneath the radical, I'm going to have two of these. Okay, that's what we would have pulled out. Now I'm not going to pull them out because I'll get right back to here. What I am going to do is 3 times 5 times 5. Let's see what that number is. 3 times 5 times 5, and it's 75. So that question mark, the square root of what? Well, that number was 75. Okay. And that's the end of part two.